In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can add multiple parallax layers, each moving at different scroll speeds like you see here to give a nice, really cool depth and space effect to your game, whether that be a side view platformer or a top down game like you see here. I'll go over everything you need to know about parallax and all the properties you can change and you'll be able to use it in no time. Let's get started. So in our demo scene here, you can see I've just got a basic tile map here with a little bit of a, um, I'm using Kenny's just um, basic map pack. I'll have a link to that in the description. And I just made kind of a random spacey, like planety, asteroid looking tile set here. So if I run this, I've got a script that lets us move the camera around. And it's pretty cool, but the background is kind of lame. It doesn't really add anything to our environment. And it would be a lot cooler if we had some kind of a parallax effect going on that really added this motion element to our game that really made things look like it was sitting in space. Parallax is one of the best ways to give an element of space and depth to a 2D game. So let's do that right now. So the first thing I need to do is in our scene, I'm gonna add a parallax layer or parallax background, excuse me. So if I type parallax, you'll see there's two things here. There's a parallax background and a parallax layer. You need to have a parallax background as the root of all of your parallax layers. So in a parallax background, you can have multiple layers. So you can have multiple tiled images, multiple stuff going on, but you need to have one parallax background that acts as the kind of parent of all of those. So I'm gonna add a parallax background and then we're gonna add just a parallax layer. And so we'll go over the properties on all of these. Generally, you probably will not want to touch or won't need to touch these properties on a parallax background. Generally, giving them the default values will be good enough. And what you're really gonna wanna do is edit the individual layers. So we're gonna eventually have three layers, but we'll start with just one. And this first one I'm gonna call Nebula. It's gonna be the one that's in the farthest back of our scene. And in order to do that, I'm gonna add a image that I found online. I'll have a link to this in the description as well. So I've got this Nebula Aqua Pink image that comes with that downloadable zip file that I've got linked below. I've also got the Star Small 1 and Star Small 2. We're gonna use all of those by the end, but we'll start with this Nebula Aqua Pink. Now we've got our parallax layer here but there's not really a place to add a image or a sprite. So what you actually need to do is, just like you might think, is add a sprite. So we have a sprite here and now we're able to add our nebula as the texture for that sprite. And this is a pretty big image, so it'll work out good there, but um, we're gonna actually set our parallax layer to tile. So the one thing you wanna make sure you do on every sprite you import that you're setting for your parallax background is send it to not be centered. You want it to be on the top left and that way it's going to tile correctly from the top left and not just try and get in trying to be based off the center of the sprite. So that's all we need to do for our sprite is just set it to be centered um, or sorry set it to be from the top left and we're good to go. Okay so the next thing that we need to do is actually set our parallax layer to tile correctly. So if you look at our sprite here, you'll see that it is 4096 by 4096. Now, what you could do is move your sprite around or you could scale it up or down. If you're gonna do that, make sure you do it on each individual sprite and not your parallax layer. So you could move our sprite around, we could set it up or down, we could, or scale it up or down. Those are all fine things to do. But what's important is that you know your image size. And so if we were to scale this down in half, it would be 2048 by 2048. But we'll keep it at just a scale of one. So 4096 by 4096. And what we're gonna do is come into our nebula and we are going to set our offset to be, or our mirroring, sorry, to be 4096 by 4096. And what this is doing is it's looking at, um, is it saying that every 4096 pixels to the, in the X direction and in the Y direction. So every 4,096 pixels right and 4,096 pixels down, we will mirror or tile our, uh, our parallax image. And if I were to move our sprite around, we'll see that it would all move together. And you can see that Godot is trying to hint this toward you by having it copied in all directions. It becomes t twice as big. And what this means is just that Godot is gonna tile this image as the camera moves around or as the viewport changes. So I'm gonna reset our position back down to here. We could move it up here just so that 
um, it's a little bit easier to see. The one bad thing about parallax is that it's not always super noticeable how it's gonna look in the editor, but that's not a big deal right now. But I'll, so I'm gonna reset our, our position overall though, um, just so that it'll tile correctly. If you move your parallax layer around, you can have some issues tiling. So we wanna make sure that we've got that set right. So the other properties here, um, there's offset and scale. Scale is the really important one that you're gonna to wanna to use. It starts at one in the X and one in the Y direction. And so what you're determining here is how quickly this parallax layer will move relative to the camera. At a scale of one, it'll move pretty much the same speed. If you set it below one, you're saying this layer needs to move slower than the camera. So this is gonna give it an element of depth. It's gonna seem far away because it's gonna move slower than the camera. If you set it faster, It'll seem closer, but that's if it's behind what you're looking at, it can be kind of weird. But you can set it, you know, to something higher than one if you want. But generally, you're probably going to be setting it to something less than one. The other property here, offset, is basically if you've got multiple parallax layers, you can kind of offset each one so they start relative in a different spot from where your overall background starts. So you might use that if you're trying to get things to look or to start at different places to kind of mix it up a bit. But we won't use that as part of this. But so now we've got all these set, we'll see what it looks like when we have a scale of one on our parallax layer. So if I start our scene up, we'll see that we've got a layer that's tiled in all directions. And now you see that if I move left and right, our parallax layer is moving at the same speed as the camera because it has that scale of one. So it's not really giving much of a parallax effect. It looks pretty nice, it's a nice background, but it doesn't really have that kind of same effect we're going for. So. What happens if we change our scale to be 0.5? And notable here, you can scale your X and Y axes at different amounts. So you could give something uh, that scales less in the Y direction than in the X. But here, now that we've set it to 0.5, you'll notice that our parallax layer is actually moving much slower than our foreground, which gives it an el just kind of this element of depth, which looks really nice since it's kind of our background. And so if I've got this now, and I set it to 0.3, we'll notice it moves even slower. It almost looks stationary, except that we can see it moving just a little bit. And this is a really nice clean effect that gives a nice element of depth to our background. Okay, so now we've got this first parallax layer, but what if we added some more? I'm gonna duplicate our nebula layer, so I'm gonna use Command-D, or Control-D, and I'm gonna say this uh, background stars. I'm actually gonna move this behind our nebula. Uh, we'll keep it here for now. So well, let's change the sprite here. So instead of nebula, I'm gonna get this stars small two or small one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll use this, I'll drag this in and you'll see now we've got this really nice star field here. And because we copied our parallax layer, it's using the same mirroring settings that our nebula was. And so now we've got this nice, um, it, it's already tiled correctly. And so what we can do here is set our parallax layer for our background stars to be slightly higher. So they'll look a little bit closer than the nebula that we have in the background. So if I start this up here, and you'll notice the difference between how our stars move to our nebula. All of a sudden, our stars look like they're closer than our nebula because they're moving a little bit quicker than the nebula behind it. So this is really awesome. All of a sudden we have added so much depth and a cool background to our game. It gives it a much bigger feel of like sitting somewhere in space. That said though, I wonder if we actually want our stars to be behind our nebula. So one of the problems is that our nebula is, is pretty opaque. You can't really see through it. I'm actually gonna take our sprite here and just kind of, oh, whoops, not material visibility. I'm gonna modulate it, make it a little bit transparent so we can see behind it. And so it's not so strong. And that way we can actually set our nebula to be 0.3 and we'll set our stars to be 0.1. So they'll move even slower than our nebula. And now if we look at this, we'll have a completely different effect where our stars are just kind of in the background. They're barely moving at all, but they kind of seem far away. And our nebula is this kind of hazy cloud that sits over them. This is a much cooler effect. And I think this is kind of more of what we're going for here but we can do even more by adding another layer of stars. And we'll try and put this one in front of the nebula. So I'm gonna copy our nebula and I'll say foreground stars. And here we're gonna change our sprite to be the stars small two that came in that zip file. And this stars one just has a little bit, so if I hide the background stars here, this one has a little bit closer stars, some that are a little bit bigger than the others. And that's why I wanna use it. 
But in order to make sure that these aren't sitting incorrectly on top of each other, first we want this parallax layer to be 0.6. So it's gonna move faster than the nebula or the background stars. We'll also give it a little bit of an offset. We'll say 2048 by 2048 so that it starts halfway down and halfway to the right so that it's not overlapping with any of the stars underneath it. Now, if we run this, we should see another layer of stars. So we've got these dim stars in the background, but we've got some stars that are even closer up here, and these are sitting above our nebula. And so it looks like we've got these multiple layers of stars that we're moving around with in the background. And so look at this effect we have. Look how cool it is and how easy it is to set up in Godot. All of a sudden, we've got three parallax layers all working together to give us this really awesome sense of depth and space to our game. And you could do some things with lighting or some, you can even set parallax layers to scroll in certain ways, lots of things you can do. But even this alone, just with some simple parallax motion has added a ton to our game. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I hope this video has been helpful and that you're ready to make parallax backgrounds in your own games now. If you found the video helpful, a like and subscribe is always appreciated. We'd love to have you on our Discord server, a link to that is in the description below. And if you find my work helpful, donating or buying me a coffee, also at the link below in the description, helps me continue to make great tutorials for free. Thanks so much, appreciate you watching, we'll see you in the next video.